good evening and welcome to the Spirit Gathering Teleconference. Today is Tuesday, February 18th, 2020, and my name is Diane Wyan. Our topic tonight is Ruminations with Rumi, and we're so glad that you have joined us on this call. Before we move into the program, let's take a moment to get settled, to center ourselves, to let go of the events of this day, and to begin to enter the deeper sacred space within ourselves. Now, let us imagine that we are joining together sacred heart to sacred heart with every other person on this call right now. Now, let us imagine that we are joining together in a circle with a light or flame or fire in the center. Imagine a spoke of light coming from the center of the circle to your heart And for each person this evening, tonight on this call, or listening in after, now we are connected sacred heart to sacred heart. Now let us set our intentions. We listen to one another with compassion and curiosity. We ask for what we need and we offer what we can. We deepen our connection with one another and the divine. May this sharing serve us, our communities, and the planet. And so it is. I would like, what I um, have is I mentioned in the ruminations with Rumi, um, Introduct or the little introduction that I gave, the little overview, um, is I had three poems that I selected uh, from Rumi to read this evening. And these poems I took from a book called A Year with Rumi. It's called Daily Readings, and it was, uh, the author is Coleman Barks. And I had such fun looking through this book. It was actually hard to select. Um, And I thought that what I would do is also read a very short um, paragraph about Rumi. Um, There was a couple interesting things that I learned about him um, from this introduction in this book. And that is, uh, the story of Rumi's life is well known. Born in the early 13th century into a lineage of scholars and mystics in Balka, then as the eastern edge of the Persian Empire, now in northern Afghanistan. He left as a boy with his family just ahead of the advancing armies of Genghis Khan. After several years of traveling, they settled in Konya, which is now south-central Turkey where Rumi became the leader after his father's death of a dervish learning community. His life and consciousness changed radically after the meeting in 1244 with his teacher and friend Shams Tabriz, a wandering mediator, meditator, excuse me, meditator, a fiery force and originality. The inner work that Shams did with Rumi, and Rumi with Shams produced the poetry. It springs from their French friendship. So, just as the title indicates, there are 365 poems, and um, I selected several, uh, just three that I'll read this evening, and then um, invite some discussion. The first is from February 16th, and it's called The Seed Market. Can you find another market like this where 
with your one rose, you can buy hundreds of rose gardens where for one seed you get a whole wilderness, for one weak breath the divine wind. You have been fearful of being absorbed in the ground or drawn upon by the air. Now your water bead lets go and drops into the ocean where it came from. This giving up is not a repenting. It is a deep honoring of yourself. When the ocean comes to you as a lover, marry at once, quickly for God's sake. Don't postpone it. Existence has no better gift. No amount of searching will find this. A perfect falcon, for no reason, has landed on your shoulder and becomes yours. The next poem is April 11th, titled, Be Your Note. Remember the lips where wind breath originated and let your note be clear. Don't try to end it. Be your note. I'll show you how it's enough. Go up on the roof at night in this city of the soul. Let everyone climb on their roofs and sing their notes. Sing loud. The third poem is from November 7th, titled, Love Dogs. One night a man was crying, Allah, Allah. His lips grew, his lips grew sweet with their praising until a cynic said, so I have heard you calling out, but have you ever gotten any response? The man had no answer for that. He quit praying and fell into a confused sleep where he dreamed he saw Kedar, the guide of souls, in a thick green foliage. Why did you stop praising? Because I've never heard anything back. This longing you express is the return message. The grief you cry out from draws you toward union. Your pure sadness that wants help is the secret cup. Listen to the moan of a dog for its master. That whining is the connection. There are love dogs no one knows the names of. Give your life to be one of them. So those are the three poems that I selected. And I'm curious if there's um, any reaction um, that you'd like to share or thoughts, comments. Well, I find each of the poems to be completely different, Mm -hmm. and I'm curious as to why you selected each of them. Well, thank you for asking. Had that not been asked, I was going to offer. So right on cue, thank you, Sally. Um, The reason is um, I was inspired by these is because – I currently am um, doing consulting work, and um, I do two different, very different things. And one of the things that I do as a consultant is I help people who are in transition, and usually the transition is they're moving from one job to another. So I work for an organization that offers 
um, services to support that transition. So it's resume, LinkedIn, getting a marketing plan, researching companies. There's many modules to this thing. And the place that I I would say most enjoy is, and I'm pretty skilled at, I would say, and so would the clients say, is helping people on a resume um, in addition to describing a position that you held and, you know, some of the um, accomplishments in that particular position. The resume begins with a summary statement. And the summary statement is, here's what you get when you get me. And the two pieces of that are whatever your subject matter expertise is. But the other part is the essence of you and how you go about solving, doing things, creating. Um, there's Everyone has kind of a personal operating system, I call it. And so when I was reading um, these different um, or reading this book and finding poems. Um, the first one is the seed market, and it's just that the rose becomes a whole garden and kind of the amazement of life. And similarly, in this work that I do, that, you know, um, people blossom and become gardens, and that's what we all want to do. We want to be who we are and I think, and belong. And so so that one was an inspiration there um, for that. And then the next one um, called Be Your Note, like go stand on a rooftop and sing loudly your note. That's what I help people um, articulate and to um, bring that forward. Um, which one can do through um, very easily through thinking about a couple of stories in your history of accomplishments that you're most proud of. And I have people share what those are. And what one is proud of was hard. And so when things get hard, what is it that gets called up in you to help solve, create, or whatever is required? And those things are the same over and over again when when you have to go inside yourself and and solve or or you know bring forth your 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 true self really and so that's what I feel like I do, and people get um very charged up and their faces light up because once that clear articulation is down. Um, the resume sort of sings, they sing, and, and it's it's like it's just expression of self. And so that's what, you know, while these are very different, and the, the love dogs um, is, you know, this, the connection piece when, um, you know, one doesn't get the job or a relationship falls apart or, or whatever, and you're, you know, asking and I need a job and whatever. And I just love that, you know, Rumi says, you know, that is the, the um, that you've heard nothing back, but it's the grief and the crying out that is the um, the piece that's trying to connect. And even the dog moaning is the whining that the dog is doing is the connection. And so I just, you know, and that's that's where that's where I was inspired by these in terms of what I do. Does that answer your question? Yeah. No, cuz they go through a range of ideas and so that gives the threat that kind of connects them. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Now and the one about seeing your what is it, story? Is it? it the, sing on the, the rooftop second. and sing your note. Right. Or, is it, that 
Yeah, what I was going to say is, as you were talking, it reminded me I participated in a program when I lived in New York City where we went into a grade school in the Bronx and people like myself volunteered to work with children who had selected different people based on their occupation. And they had been pre-screened by these therapists to really work to identify what had cited them. So, you know, you would find some people were excited by firemen, some by teachers. There were models that came in and would teach these kids how to strut in a walk. And as you were saying, it was really about, the name of it was Light My Way Career Day. And it was that idea of being able to identify with that inner voice, inner calling, Mm -hmm. you know. And it was amazing to feel the excitement and the connection by these children Mm -hmm. who, you know, who really felt it in their bodies. It wasn't just, oh, well, it might be interesting to hear about this. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It was the it was full on and it was their whole beingness. It's their exactly, essence. yeah, exactly, yeah. And the, and the essence is touching their divinity or t- touching their light, and then their sh- faces get shiny and their whole body exudes joy. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that that's like the best. You know, it's great for the for you as the person working with them, but it's it's equal seeing it on their faces and their joy. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great story. So I was curious because one of the things, if you'd like to share, um, is if you think about something in your life that you did that is a proud of, like a a brief story, like what was the situation, what was the issue or obstacle, what did you do, actions you took, and then what did that result in? Um, Is there anything that comes to mind? Because, again, I thought it would be interesting to share on this call what's – what one what each of our essences are what are our our gifts and like this river that runs through us of you know life and our divinity and expression of that I can share a story um, for myself that um, comes to mind, which is, um, I don't know what year, let's just say uh, sometime in the later 80s, um, I was a new manager. Um, I worked with um, a database company called LexisNexis, which is an information, legal information and news and stuff. It was pretty cutting edge at the time. And um, I was, I had been in New York, and then I was invited to come and be a manager in D.C., and that's where I moved. And um, part of the territory that um, that I came to was included North Carolina, and um, the some previous representative. Um, who was calling on law firms and corporations where there were attorneys and things in North Carolina. I have no idea what they did, but whatever they did was really bad service. 
such that, you know, law firms and corporations um, didn't want to have anything to do with this company, Lexis. And, you know, the um, revenues were declining and it was this big, fat mess. And, you know, they didn't care if there's new people. It's whatever this person did must have been pretty bad uh, everywhere, clearly. So um, what I did is I went to every every year there's an annual um, bar meeting um, for each state has their own little bar meeting. And so I went to the North Carolina bar meeting, and it was this most amazing experience because the um it was like sacred it was like when they did you know the usual acknowledgement recognition speeches the usual kind of program like that and when they got to this one portion of their program which was um pro bono work in North Carolina so where attorneys would give their services um at no charge usually to um people with little means um and it's like it was it was like church and what i mean by that was you could feel the the quiet there was there was total quiet total attention they had this beautiful booklet specially for pro bono law firms and corporations and people that they were recognizing like a bulletin very beautifully done engraved and you know it, extremely well done and and also you could feel the sacredness that the people in the room felt about this pro bono program and that they really cared about this and it was a really beautiful recognition and you know again it just felt very sacred so what I did is I said well they care about this and here we have a database service, legal information, that they would need to help their clients. And I wondered if I could put a pro bono program together of our services so that they wouldn't have to pay for those when they themselves were doing their pro bono work. And it took a little bit of doing, but my experience of conceiving of the idea and then every last detail to make sure that things got implemented. Um, there was a lot of pieces of the puzzle. And um, and I got it going. And it was this whole flow experience. Like, no detail was too small, no stone too small to uncover, etc. And it totally turned things around because it was this alignment with something that was really important to them, and it was supporting um, that work in a way that um, uh, not only supported the work, but like the kind of the mission behind the work of helping people who are indigent or, or of little means. And so that remains one of the proudest things that in my um, history that um, that I put together, and you know, that was in the 80s, and that program is still alive and well these decades later. Hmm. So that's a proud of that I can share, and I think to identify essence pieces, it was um, like getting, um, you know, trying to understand at a high level what mattered, you know, not just going in and knocking on a door and trying to sell something when the door was being slammed. And there was, so it raised up the conversation to a level that was higher than everyone doing pro bono work is, you know, it's like at this high level. And I think that's an attribute that I have is to, to scope things in a bigger way and to bring actually like raise a vibration to some higher level and and that just kind of fell into my lap i was looking for something and that was the connection and also i think making the connection with all the details mapped out like so that there were no holes and like stuff didn't fall apart that the program was launched without a hitch 
and and um, so I think it's those are the attributes that um, that got pulled up in me that I have. And I'm complete with that story. Thank you for listening. Is there a is there a um a proud of story that either of you have to share? Well Ken, did you want to go ahead? You haven't you've been quiet so far. Otherwise I'm happy to go. Why don't you go? <laughs> okay. Um I mean I've always been very proud when I've worked as a homeopath and come upon a remedy that has greatly helped an individual. And um you know, I I've had what they call these how would you say there's a book that's called The Miracle of the Minimum Dose and I've seen that happen with people using homeopathy and it always validates the hard work that's gone into learning this pretty complicated discipline. Mm -hmm. Um, And probably the most rewarding for me was treating a boy that came in and he couldn't speak and after he took the remedy that I recommended he came back a month later and he could talk and so there there have been times where you get that what I call life changing situation um And actually, today, I was thinking about the fact that I was working on a case before dinner, and the client I've worked with on and off since 2005, and I thought, gee, you know, this really spans a long time, but I haven't really worked since about 2012, because they've been, well, and good. And, um, you know, what came up for me is one of the things that is an attribute for me is my persistence. That I work on situations, I work on relationships, and there is that kind of staying power um, that I bring to a situation. And The other thing is that I think one of the things that I heard that you described, Diane, that I relate to is just intentionality. You know, I heard that you really had the intention of creating something of benefit. And since I've been in North Carolina, one of the things I've chosen to do is get involved in a lot of um, volunteer work where I could be of service to the community. So, you know, it was like I got elected to the president of the Weaverville Garden Club, which is a joke coming from New York after 33 years. I know very little about gardening, (laughs) but I do have computer experience and I can run a business meeting and I have leadership skills. And today I just met with two women and we cleaned out some of the garden plantings in the center of our little town. And it was just so rewarding to dig in the dirt and plant out the beds and know how much enjoyment the community gets from these, 
you know, lovely gardens as the different seasons go through the year. Mm-hmm. And tomorrow we're going to make a pitch to make us a BUSA city in America and possibly also start a Kids in the Park program in alignment with the Blue Bridge Parkway Foundation. So, you know, all of that is, to me, kind of looking for where can you do good and how do you serve the greater good um, and a willingness to get in there and do the work. As you said, your program would not be here today after all those years if you hadn't put in the time to think it through mm-hmm. and to be sure that all the details had been put in place. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think one of the gifts that I have that I didn't realize until I was in my 30s is that I have the capacity to observe kind of structural operations and identify immediately where things are breaking down. And I used to think this was self-evident to everyone. And it was like, then as I got out into the corporate world, I realized that people were really clueless. They just didn't understand why people were talking at each other and kind of missing things. Uh Um, And so that's been one of the things that since that point, I have tried to, you know, focus on and see how I can bring that quality into an organization or a situation. Because generally speaking, I'm, you know, kind of the quiet person that presence is not very, you know, dynamic in a group. I'm much more the observer and just kind of the peacemaker and um, look more to see what what is missing and what needs to be kind of tended to. So, yeah, I think that's probably plenty. I'll put down the stick. Thank you very much for sharing. Is there anything you would like to share, Ken, that comes to mind for you? It sounds like we have similar stories and similar backgrounds. Um, I also was in D.C. and actually have used LexisNexis. Oh, my. Um, So I know the the program that you're talking about or the the product line that you're talking about. Anyway, uh, my... Discussion comes from uh, this very last weekend. Um, Unity Unity Church has a uh, an organizational method that the West Central region is made up of everything from Fresno to the California border, including uh, uh, the upper part of Nevada. And uh, one of our churches is in a period of. Uh, shock or in transformation. And I had a chance this weekend to go over and, and be in community with them. And it was a real um, heartfelt experience to find people, even though they're in different locations, have similar goals. 
and how we go about it in such different manners. As you mentioned earlier that uh, you were amazed that people couldn't see holes in programs. Um, likewise, uh, looking in uh, Eureka, California, um, it's a very relaxed um, you know, church. And a lot of things that you could do in other areas you really can't do there you know, because of their methodologies of, of just how they go about uh, forming community. And it was interesting to hear them with what their needs were. While they have a total different community, uh, the needs were exactly the same. You know, they want to they want to grow. They want to become prosperous. They want to have an impact in the community, which is exactly what we want for any of our uh, church communities. We want them to reflect what we see in community and to be able to be there in with them so that I could participate in them speaking out loud where they want to go and envisioning their growth and knowing that the words they use are strong and you can't start anything without an idea. So from you know divine mind to idea to manifestation is a process and we need to go through it. And a lot of times people don't remember the impact of spirit in the decision-making process and be able to lead a, a, a community, a congregation, into that heart space so that they could state and see the ideas they hold for their own uh, religious or their own spiritual community and that growth. And for them to come up with steps that they were willing to take was uh, just enormously filled with that heart feeling of love and happiness and joy. Mm -hmm. And I will put that talking stick down. Mm. Thank you for sharing. That's beautiful. And what I'm struck by, if I could just comment, is that it's going to a higher space, to your point, the divine, or the and the higher space within themselves, which we all have, because we all have the divinity spark within ourselves, and then and bringing it just it's like what I was saying about the pro bono is just to go higher than you know we had a bad rep in the past and we don't want your service. It's that you the coming together comes from the higher plane, is what I was hearing you say. And that was my experience as well. Lovely. Well, it's very nice to hear um, stories, um, which is what I had um, had hoped and intended for anyone on the call this evening um, as a way for us to know more about one another, um, both in details of story as well as in um, that which comes from our essence self and is contributed and can be contributed out in the world. And, um, and that is what... Um, you know, these poems in different ways were for me. And um, I hope were interesting and um, interesting for you. Is there anything else that comes to mind um, that either of you have to share or would like to say or comment on? If not, then I would invite each of us to just state as, a, as part of the checkout what's in your heart and mind as we begin to close this session. Um, a one word or a brief sentence checkout. I will begin. The idea that often 
if we try to come to understanding of what is ours to do without going within, we often uh, just get laughed at that what is ours to do comes from within, and we have to step aside and allow it to manifest. Mm. Yeah, uh, I'm inspired from what you shared, Ken, to say that it. I um, couldn't agree more. And what I leave with also is that it's always right there if, as you say, if we give it space and we allow um, and connect with that um, part. So I'm also leaving with, just the inspiration um, of that concept itself and from our sharing this evening. Thank you. So I'm leaving with a sense of connection that comes from love, flow, um, really an intent on service. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us for this Spirit Gathering teleconference. The call may be archived as an MP3 at www.tazadi.org, and phone access to the recording of this call is available until next month's call. The playback of the recording is dialing 712 432 1085, access code 990-322-POUND. We hope that you'll be able to join us for the next Spirit Gathering, which will be on Tuesday, March 17th at the same time, 5.30 Pacific, 8.30 Eastern. These calls are hosted by Tazadi, an interspiritual metaphysical organization founded in California in 1964. Tazadi welcomes, nurtures, and supports people in celebrating and more directly experiencing their relationship with the loving presence of the divine. Our programs are open to people of any race, color, nationality, or ethnic origin. Visit Tazadi.org to learn more. We now close with thanks and a blessing. Thanks to Tazadi founders Amy Keyes and Dorothy Blackmere. And thanks to both of you who have been a part of our community tonight. And thanks to the divine who is supporting us always, even when we are not aware of it. And I will close with, may many blessings be upon you. Is there any blessing that either of you would like to share as our closing? And so be it. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you again both very much. It was lovely to connect with you, and I wish you a rest, of, a good rest of your evening. Thank you. You too, Diane. Okay. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you.